creepy album cover. The group is called Fish. Fish. Like you're using the phone, but fish. And the song is free. Free of charge for you today. If I kind of pick this guy's nose, you know, I like to play around that. Put your old mustache on. You know, all sorts of fun things with this album. Dark and a bit too. It looks like he has only one too. Here's a big crescendo. It's coming. I love it. Made it out. All right, thanks for joining again today. Here we go, another good class. We're gonna be working on uh, writing, another writing lesson coming at ya. We'll call this one uh, writing, it's still freshman year, so it's uh, writing one point. Well, let's see, last time we called it what? Writing 101, so this would be uh, Writing 102. Our second lesson in writing. This time, we're gonna take a look at an actual CRQ that you might see on a test or at the end of a unit in my class. You might also see these CRQs, these constructive response questions. That's what we learned about last time right, is how to construct a three-sentence response to a question. And these are the CRQs that you might see on the Regents exam at the end of 10th grade. Okay, so it's this very important stuff in order to understand how to do this. Um, and sort of fascinatingly, I like doing this stuff at the beginning of the year before we've really covered any global history. Like we really haven't got into the core of the course and it's still mid-October. Why haven't I gotten into the middle of the course? So why haven't I gotten into the course uh, deeply? Well, it's because part of what we're learning to do is be exposed to information that we've never seen before, right? Like you guys have never seen these photos in my global studies course, and you have no idea, you probably can't even pronounce this title. This is the silver rupee of Sadaf, Nuab of Ud. I mean, what does that mean? Like you have no clue what that means. And this is why this is important to me personally, right? Forget about you know, school and global studies and regents exams. Personally, I find being able to work with information that I have very little exposure to extremely important. I mean, think about the lives you guys are leading right now. You have what I call exo brains, right? You've got these phones in your pocket with the uh, connection to the internet, and you have an immense amount of information at your disposal right here in your hand. And you could run into web pages about topics that you really don't know about. And we have to have the ability as humans now to think logically and reasonably through these uh, myriad, meaning like almost unlimited, number of web pages that we can grasp information from, we need to be able to think through that information logically and make sense of it. And there is no better way to do it than through the social sciences, right? To really examine what it is we're learning from a random piece of information. So even though we haven't really gotten to the core of our ninth grade curriculum, I'm going to throw this out at you. And just by thinking like a social scientist, and just by constructing a response and sort of this uh, fact, proof, social science storyline method that I taught you on the previous writing video, simply by doing that, we can start to understand and grasp information that we're not familiar with. So let's take a look at this uh, little article of the Silver Rupee of Sadat Nuav of Ud. And I am just going to, uh, if you'll be patient with me, I'm going to try and zoom in on the written piece. 
Okay, and we will read this out loud together. If I can back up a little bit. Okay, here we go. Focus. As Mughal power declined in India during the 18th and 19th centuries, local princes who had taken control of their own districts began to issue their own silver rupees. This is a coin issued by one of the Rawabs, which is a ruler of the region of Awad, which I was incorrectly pronouncing Ood earlier because I didn't know. And so it is pronounced Awad. And it is in the Jangentic Plain of Northern India. So already I've been tossed a lot of information about something I really don't know anything about. And I'm in the same boat as you. I'm the teacher. I don't know anything about Awad. And I certainly don't know anything about the silver rupees of Sadat. Many locals, and I'm picking up again here, many local rulers continued to acknowledge the Mughal emperor by featuring his name on their coins long after their states had achieved independence from Mughal authority. The coin of Sadat, for example, has the name of the Mughal emperor Shah Alam II, who reigned from 1759 to 1806. It is dated A.H. 1226, which translates to about 1811 A.D. The coins were distinguishable as local independent issues by their mint names and by the mint symbols that appeared on them. On this coin, the stylized mint symbols of a fish, a triangular flag, a star, and an ear of wheat, and the fixed date year 26 identify the mint as look now. These symbols help the state authorities and money changers recognize where the coins were made. And then I have two pictures. All right, here is a picture of the coin. And on the back side, right, and we perhaps see the wheat and the fish. And we can identify sort of what was described up here. Citation. Sometimes this stuff is important. We can't let any information go, right? So some kids would be reluctant to actually read the citation. I'm not. This is the silver rupee of Sadat. Okay? And it is uh, a Nawab of Owad. Now that I know how to pronounce that. And it's from about uh, 1811 or AH 1226. Now, I don't even necessarily, as your teacher, I can't necessarily make sense of that myself. But I know that it's old. It's made of silver. It's 11.13 grams in the London measurement. And this coin is in the British Museum. Here's some historical context. Again, they're giving you more information. Don't pass it up. All of this information is going to be important when it comes to answering the question here in a moment. Historical context refers to the historical circumstances that led to an event or a historical development. And the question is, let me see if I'm off this. I might even be off the screen here as I'm zoomed in. There was the citation. Now I'm going to zoom back out so we can see the question. Sorry, making you sick probably. And the question is, explain the historical context surrounding the creation of the silver rupees. Okay, explain the historical context. And I go, oh, well, what's the historical context? Well, here it is right here. That's why this was important. Historical context refers to the historical circumstances that led to an event, an idea, or a development. So it's basically... The, that led to, it's a cause, right? Explain the causes surrounding the creation of these silver rupees. Why do these silver rupees exist and where did they come from? And I've got all this information to work with and I have the two photos. And so now I got to get to work on my fact, my proof and my storyline. And so let's work through that together. And again, there's lots of different correct answers. There's lots of different ways that we could look at this. 
but let's start by answering the question by restating part of the fact. And I'm just going to double check kind of what my camera's looking at here. I'm going to swing out so I have some board space. Okay. Um, a fact. Well, I start by rewording part of the question. Explain the historical context surrounding the creation of the silver rupees. The silver rupees of Sadat were created because. is due to instead of because. And then I come back into here and I should sort of understand why these rupees were created. Okay. Many local rulers continue to acknowledge the Mughal emperor by featuring his name on the coins long after their states had achieved independence from Mughal authority. The coin of stop, for example, has the name of the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam on it. Oh, what happened there? Sorry, I gotta give it a wiggle. Oh, I'm wiggling the wrong house, guys. I forgot I was projecting over here. There we go. Sorry. A little technical glitch difficulty. Okay. Um, let's see. They began to issue, let's see, the 19th century's local princes had taken control of their own districts and began to issue their own silver rupees. The coin issued by one of these rulers in the region of Wad of northern India is this coin right here. Okay, so why were these coins created? And they were really created, if we read carefully, you would think on the surface they were kind of created as money or as an exchange uh, sort of currency, right? But they were really created, if I get into here and if I get into here, right? Local princes took control of their districts and began to issue their own silver rupees. The symbols helped the state authorities and money changers recognize where the coins were made. So they were definitely being used as currency, as money, and they were also issued to sort of identify or to honor the local princes that controlled these different districts in the empire. So I have multiple answers that I could draw off of, and we just have to kind of choose one. The silver rupees of Sadat were created due to um, reasons that included uh, using them as currency, right, or money. We can use money. Let's take the language down a notch, right? Using them as money and as a way to identify which ruler's district It came from. Okay, and there is my answer. That is a factual answer that wraps part of the question back in. Then I got to move into proof. Prove it. Okay, prove it. Well, one way that we can prove it, right here is our document here. Here is an excerpt by unknown right, that it describes the purpose of the coin. And so I'm going to start with that sort of canned response according to, and then I have to just figure out what I'm going to use. Do I use the pictures according to the pictures of these coins? Uh, the pictures, the coins have different symbols such as fish and ears of wheat on them to separate out where the coins were made. I could say something like that. Right, according to pictures of the rupees, coins had 
different symbols that helped authorities recognize where the coins were made. So now I've got two sentences building towards my position, right? Two sentences building towards this constructed response. And then the only sentence we're missing now is which social scientists would sort of agree with this position that I'm taking. And so I have to get a little clever and I can think, all right, well, which social scientists would agree? Sorry about the shadows down there. But if I kind of go for a little ride over here, here's my social scientists again. Which social scientists would sort of understand that money and identifying where the money is from and how much money there is out there, sort of the supply of money, if you will, which econo I'm sorry, which social scientists would sort of agree with that? And very clearly, if I sort of like think about which social scientists would be interested in this, Sure, we could say the psychologists might say that the rulers of these empires wanted to identify themselves as important. And so maybe there's a piece of it there. But really, the easiest argument to make is here. Economists would all agree that these coins were created so that people could use them in exchange for goods and services. Okay. And so if I come back over here, I've kind of run out of board space. I've run out of board space here, so I'm just going to finish my third sentence. Ooh, rocking and rolling. I'm going to finish my third sentence about right here. So here's sentence one of my answer. Here's sentence two, the proof sentence. And now my third sentence of my answer is going to sound something like this. Most economists would agree that tracking the supply of coins is important. And why is it important? This is a supply and demand thing. We have to have control of the supply of money so that the money is actually worth something is important. So the coins have value when trading for goods and services, right? That's why these coins have these unique marks on them. We do the same thing in our country. If you look at a penny, Right, that penny has all sorts. It's got a year on it. It's got a mint on it. Sometimes there's a little letter real tiny. If you look at it under a microscope, that tells you where it was minted. And every dollar bill, every coin in the United States is tracked, meaning we know exactly how many of them there are out there. So that way those coins keep their money and can actually be traded for goods and services. And an economist would understand that. So now when I read my three sentence answer, my constructed response, to, hey, what's the historical context behind the creation of these silver rupees? My answer sounds something like this. The silver rupees of Sadat were created due to reasons that included using them as money and as a way to identify which ruler's district it came from. According to pictures of the rupees, coins had different symbols to help authorities recognize where the coins were made, right? Those are those mint markings. Most economists would agree that tracking the supply of coins is important so the coins have value in trading for goods and services. Now that is a constructed response to the question. If you simply 
had answered a one sentence answer to this question, explain the historical context surrounding the creation of silver rupees. If you said they used the silver rupees for money, that would not really be a strong position. Okay, we're teaching you to have a more constructed response where you strengthen your position and have a fuller understanding. And that is sort of the model we want to follow. And there isn't anything here that's terribly uh, difficult to grasp, right? There's nothing in our answer that we just constructed that's super difficult to grasp. It's pretty straightforward. We didn't even know what a silver rupee from Sadat was. And all we did was force ourselves to sort of like slow down, find the answers that are given to us, and then back it up with uh, the pictures or the writing that's in the document that's provided, and then find the correct social scientist that would sort of agree with our argument. And in doing so, we really just expanded our writing into something that's a lot stronger. So this is our example of what we're gonna be doing when we get these CRQs. Um, so far you've practiced by writing uh, Hopefully you've practiced by writing the, what would you do if you hit the lottery? Hopefully you came up with a three sentence answer to that. And here is a three sentence answer to this CRQ question uh, as a model. So our next lesson is actually going to drop a real CRQ on you, sort of the end of our unit one, and you're gonna be on your own to try and ferret through how to develop a three sentence answer that makes sense to whatever question that CRQ asks. We'll see you on the next episode. Good luck on the CRQ stuff. We're going to grind on it all year. By the end of the year, you're going to be great writers developing these three-sentence answers to CRQ questions. See ya.